Okay, so today we're going to see how to do an import into Salesforce for your uh, contacts and your accounts. So on the accounts tab, there is an area under tools for import my accounts and contacts. And then we just go into the import wizard for contacts. There are options for Microsoft Outlook which uh, basically tells you how to export the file into a CSV so that you can import it. Uh, similarly for ACT, in which case the mappings are already chosen for you. Um, and then there's other types of CSVs, which is what we're going to look at next. So basically I've already got a file prepared. And because I do not have email addresses for all of my uh, contacts, we're just going to go by their name. Now this next thing is for the mapping for the contacts. You may notice that address is not on here and uh, phones are not on here. That will be covered on the next step of the mapping. If we had a full name, Salesforce of course prefers it split up, but you get the choice of the full name or the first name. These columns are zero based columns where here we have the first name. If we look at our spreadsheet, the first column is zero, one, two, and then three and four are our first name and our last name. We also have an uh, email address to be mapped. So we're just gonna pick from the dropdown our email address. Some people have more than one contact on the same spreadsheet and some export programs do it this way. Uh, Salesforce will handle up to three. It doesn't handle as much information. So for example, I have uh, street one and uh, street two. Uh, if instead I had you know, contact one and contact two. So next we're gonna map the address. So remember before I had street one and street two, it thinks this is the next line of the street, which is not true. So we're gonna unselect that. Street two is actually a second record. We would then of course uh, check the rest of the boxes that need to be mapped. And uh, phones and their extensions are imported separately, but they're actually combined into one field. Overwrite existing values also works if I have uh, duplicate records in the system. So as I import these uh, company names, if I had to, like different websites, then uh, it would overwrite them as I import them. In uh, this case, I do have one duplicate record with uh, different um, addresses. So it's going to overwrite that this address with this second one in the line as we import them. I only have the uh, the company name and the uh, website that I need to map. You don't actually have to web map the uh, website or any of these fields. It's just there on my spreadsheet, so that's why I'm mapping them. I believe the names are pretty much the only fields required, the contact name and the account name. And these are fields that I haven't mapped yet, so I have the option of including them as a note on the contact or a note on the account. I'm going to put them on the account just to show you what happens. So now we've created three accounts, and that's because this text name, uh, Wayne Enterprise, Star Labs, and Springfield were matched up as an exact text match as I imported them. The number of contacts created is 18. That's because there was one duplicate record in there, and that one is the one that got uh, updated. And the number of notes created is uh, 19, and that's because for this field here that we didn't map, each one created I, a new record attached to an account. So these would have all gone to Wayne Enterprise, uh, these all to Star Labs, and these all to Springfield for a total of 19. And it will create the field as the body and the uh, number as the value. So if we go back to our accounts, we're gonna use the new this week because we just created them this week view. We see three accounts. We can see the contacts created for that account and we can see that the uh, notes were created. Okay, thanks for watching.